Good morning, friend of mine. I am Pastor Hugh McKenzie, a pastor from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A happy day to you and your loved ones. Every morning we share two chapters from the audio Bible narrated by Alexander Scorby and a devotional from one of the chapters shared. May you be spiritually blessed and refreshed as you listen. Please share the presentations so that someone else may be blessed. May God continue to bless you and your family as you listen every day. God bless you. Chapter 10 Then I looked, and behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims, there appeared over them as it were a sapphire stone, as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. And he spake unto the man clothed with linen, and said, Go in between the wheels, even unto the cherub, and fill thine hand with coals of fire from between the cherubims, and scatter them over the city. And he went in in my sight. Now the cherubims stood on the right side of the house when the man went in, and the cloud filled the inner court. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub, and stood over the threshold of the house, and the house was filled with the cloud, and the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. And the sound of the cherubim's wings was heard even to the outer court, as the voice of the Almighty God when he speaketh. And it came to pass, that when he had commanded the man clothed with linen, saying, Take fire from between the wheels, from between the cherubim's, then he went in and stood beside the wheels. And one cherub stretched forth his hand from between the cherubims unto the fire that was between the cherubims, and took thereof, and put it into the hands of him that was clothed with linen, who took it and went out. And there appeared in the cherubims the form of a man's hand under their wings. And when I looked, behold, the four wheels by the cherubims, one wheel by one cherub and another wheel by another cherub. And the appearance of the wheels was as the color of a beryl stone. And as for their appearances, they four had one likeness, as if a wheel had been in the midst of a wheel. When they went, they went upon their four sides. They turned not as they went, but to the place whither the head looked, they followed it. They turned not as they went. And their whole body, and their backs, and their hands, and their wings, and the wheels were full of eyes round about, even the wheels that they four had. As for the wheels, it was cried unto them in my hearing, O wheel! And every one had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub, and the second face was the face of a man, and the third the face of a lion, and the fourth the face of an eagle. And the cherubims were lifted up. This is the living creature that I saw by the river of Kibar. And when the cherubims went, the wheels went by them. And when the cherubims lifted up their wings to mount up from the earth, the same wheels also turned not from beside them. When they stood, these stood. And when they were lifted up, these lifted up themselves also. For the spirit of the living creature was in them. Then the glory of the Lord departed from off the threshold of the house and stood over the cherubims. And the cherubims lifted up their wings and mounted up from the earth in my sight. When they went out, the wheels also were beside them. And every one stood at the door of the east gate of the Lord's house, and the glory of the God of Israel was over them above. This is the living creature that I saw under the God of Israel by the river of Kibar. And I knew that they were the cherubims. Every one had four faces apiece, and every one four wings, and the likeness of the hands of a man was under their wings. And the likeness of their faces was the same faces which I saw by the river of Kibar, their appearances and themselves. They went, every one, straight forward. Chapter 8 In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at the first. And I saw in a vision. And it came to pass, when I saw that I was at Shushan in the palace, which is in the province of Elam. And I saw in a vision, and I was by the river of Ulai. Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward, so that no beasts might stand before him, neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will, and became great. And as I was considering, behold, an he-goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth, 
and touched not the ground, and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. And he came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river, and ran unto him in the fury of his power. And I saw him come close unto the ram, and he was moved with choler against him, and smote the ram, and brake his two horns. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him, but he cast him down to the ground, and stamped upon him. And there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. Therefore the he-goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken and for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great toward the south, and toward the east, and toward the pleasant land. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground, and stamped upon them. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And he said unto me, unto two thousand and three hundred days. Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. And it came to pass, when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision, and sought for the meaning, then, behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Uli, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid, and fell upon my face. But he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. Now as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground. But he touched me, and set me upright, and he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation, for at the time appointed the end shall be. The ram which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia, and the rough goat is the king of Grecia and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it, four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his power. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes. But he shall be broken without hand. And the vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true. Wherefore, shut thou up the vision, for it shall be for many days. And I, Daniel, fainted and was sick certain days. Afterward I rose up and did the king's business, and I was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. Welcome to another broadcast. We are grateful that you have allowed us to share with you this afternoon, and we would like you to know that we are praying for you, that God would intervene in your situation. Today we are focusing on a significant event which occurred yearly in the earthly sanctuary. That event was called the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we pray that you would take charge of your word at this time. Hover over each viewer at this time and may your Holy Spirit, help us to understand this most sacred truth. In Jesus' name, Amen. In the earthly sanctuary, there was an event called the Day of Atonement. In the earthly sanctuary of the Old Testament, the Day of Atonement was a very significant day 
and something awesome and important happened on that day. It is when we understand the events in the earthly sanctuary, especially what occurred on the Day of Atonement, it is when we understand those events we are able to understand the judgment and what Jesus is doing for us right now in the heavenly sanctuary. The function of the Day of Atonement was to remove from the sanctuary the sins that had been placed there throughout the year by the daily services. We say that again. The function of the Day of Atonement was to remove from the sanctuary the sins that had been placed there throughout the year symbolized by the blood sprinkled on the altar and before the veil. Leviticus chapter 16 and verse 30 tells us and by the way the Day of Atonement service is for the most part found in Leviticus chapter 16. Leviticus chapter 16 and verse 30 states, For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you, that ye may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. Again, the Bible says, For on that day, the day of atonement, shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you that ye may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. Friend of mine, the day of atonement was a most solemn day, a day of judgment that took place in Israel once each year. The Bible says concerning that day, in Leviticus chapter 23 now, verses 27 to 30, the Bible states, Also, on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you, before the Lord your God. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. A very serious and solemn day. The Day of Atonement, friend of mine, was intended to be a day of soul-searching. The Day of Atonement was intended to be a day of soul-searching. You see, the people recognized that each individual must cooperate in the cleansing work by confessing his sins and calling upon God. It was a solemn day. On the Day of Atonement, every sin had to be confessed and forsaken. Those who refused this confessing and forsaking act were on that very day cut off forever from the camp of Israel. The Day of Atonement services represented cleansing from sin and reconciliation to God. We say that again, the Day of Atonement services represented cleansing from sin and the reconciliation to God. The ritual of the Day of Atonement began with the high priest bathing his body and putting on the holy linen garments, Leviticus 16, 4. Then the high priest offered a sacrifice, a bull, as an offering, a sin offering for himself and for his family. Leviticus chapter 16 and verse 4, Leviticus chapter 16 and verse 6. 
After this personal preparation, two goats were selected. One was the Lord's goat, one represented the Lord, and the other was the scapegoat, which represented Satan. Two goats were selected. The Bible states, Leviticus chapter 16, verses 7 and 8, the Bible says, And he, the priest, shall take two goats, and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron the high priest shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. They made a choice by lots, a process called casting lots. The Lord's goat was then taken and slain and offered for the sins of the people, Leviticus 69. Its blood, the blood of the slain goat representing Jesus, the blood of the slain goat was taken into the most holy place and sprinkled upon and before the mercy seat. Only on this day of the year, one day on the day of atonement, was the priest and the high priest alone was he to enter into the most holy place of the earthly sanctuary the place that contained the ark of the testimony or the ark of the covenant which housed the ten commandments on two tablets of stone leviticus chapter 16 and verse 9 tells us what happened to the lord's goat and aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell, and offer him for a sin offering. Verse 16, Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering, that is for the people, and bring his blood within the veil, and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock, and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat, and before the mercy seat, and he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgression in all their sins and so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanness. Ladies and gentlemen, only on this special day did the high priest enter the most holy place the sprinkled blood represents the sacrifice of Jesus and the blood was accepted by God and the confessed sins of the people were by that act transferred from the sanctuary to the high priest. We say that again when the priest took the blood of the Lord's goat and sprinkled the blood before and upon the mercy seat in the most holy place by that means, the sprinkled blood represented the sacrifice of Jesus, and by means of the sprinkled blood, atonement was made for the people, and the confessed sins of the people were then transferred from the sanctuary onto the high priest. The high priest then, as it were, carrying the sins of the people upon himself, went next, went next, and confess these sins upon the scapegoat representing Satan and the scapegoat the other goat that was not slain the scapegoat was then led into the wilderness and abandoned the Bible tells us that Leviticus chapter 16 verse 20 to 22 the Bible says and when he the high priest hath made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar he shall bring the live goat the other goat that was not slain and Aaron verse 21 and Aaron the high priest shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions in all their sins putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man 
into the wilderness. And the goat shall bear upon him all the iniquities unto a land not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. Friend of mine, in this manner, the sanctuary was symbolically cleansed from the sins of the people, which had been transferred there by the sprinkled blood all through the year. As a sinner after sinner brought his lamb, and he killed the sacrifice, and the priest sprinkled the blood before the veil, by that means the sins of the people were transferred to the sanctuary every day, every day throughout the year. And on this one day called the Day of Atonement, the sins of the people were transferred from the sanctuary and placed on the head of the scapegoat representing Satan, and the goat was led away into the wilderness by a fit man and left to wander and die. Symbolizing the fact that the sins of the people were were taken away nevermore to be held against them. Friend of mine, we learn from the activities of the Day of Atonement that Jesus wants to cleanse us from sin. He is not comfortable with the presence of sin in his physical earthly tabernacle or in the spiritual tabernacle of our lives. We say that again. We learned from the activities of the Day of Atonement that Jesus wants to cleanse us from sin. God is not comfortable with the presence of sin in his earthly tabernacle neither is he comfortable with sin in our lives the spiritual tabernacle according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verses 1 and 4 in that passage 2 Corinthians 5 verses 1 and 4 Paul likens our body to an earthly tabernacle Speaking of the fact that our bodies belong to God, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 states, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. If any man defile the temple of God with sin, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. And friend of mine, today we do not have a day of atonement to get rid of sin. All we need to do is confess and forsake sin. God encourages us in his word to confess and forsake sin. And by the way, it is only he who knows himself to be a sinner that Christ can save. We say that again. It is only he who knows himself to be a sinner and accepts himself to be a sinner that Christ can save. The other day I discovered that there are some people out there who do not think that we are sinners born predisposed to sin. But the Bible does tell us clearly in uh, Romans 3 23 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God we are born sinners and it is only he who knows himself to be a sinner and accepts himself to be a sinner that Christ can save and Jesus came friend of mine to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised Luke 4 18 but Jesus also went on to say but they that are whole need not a physician Luke 5 31 those who think themselves okay without Jesus will not sense their need of a savior we must know our real condition or we shall not feel our need of Christ's help we must understand our danger from sin 
that it can cost us our eternal salvation and we will die lost souls and join Satan in the fires of hell. We must know our danger. We must understand our danger or we shall not flee to Jesus for refuge. We must feel the pain of our wounds or we shall not desire healing. And so Jesus invites us in Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 13 the Bible says he that covereth his sin shall not prosper but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy Jesus tells us in advance that if we come to him we shall have mercy mercy is the outward expression of pity remember in the story of the good Samaritan the Bible says the man who came by and helped the wounded man on the road showed him mercy by binding up his wounds and treating his wounds and so when we are are bruised up by sin and Satan I am glad that Jesus is there to to bind up our wounds to remove uh, the pain of guilt and set us free so we can smile and and laugh and have this wonderful feeling of peace and joy inside but yet salvation and forgiveness must be accepted by faith even though there would be the feeling of joy we must not depend merely on the feeling of joy to know that we are forgiven or we are saved and so the bible says in first john 1 9 if we confess our sins god is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and so friend of mine the sanctuary service and the events of the day of atonement tells us clearly that God is not comfortable with sin around whether in his tabernacle or in our lives and he invites us to confess them so that he can take them away and give us of his peace and of his Holy Spirit to enable us to live the overcomers life and so the words of the hymn encourage us him right to says come every soul by sin oppressed there is mercy with the Lord and he will surely give you rest by trusting in his word for Jesus shed his precious blood rich blessings to bestow plunge now into that crimson flood that washes white as snow friend of mine doesn't matter what you have done if you are sincere and you confess your sins and say Lord forgive me I am sorry he will forgive you and take the load of guilt from off your shoulder this guilt that is like a burden crushing out your life and he will remove it and replace the guilt with peace and joy and you'll have a sense of well-being knowing that you have a God in heaven who cares for you oh no you don't have to do penance you don't have to repeat certain sayings or certain enchantments oh no the Bible says if we confess our sins God is faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse and when he has cleansed our hearts from sin we can say in the words of the hymn chief of sinners though I be Jesus shed his blood for me died that I might live on high died that I might never die as the branch is to the vine I am his and he is mine ladies and gentlemen the Old Testament day of atonement in the earthly sanctuary with its affliction of soul forgiveness of sins and the judgment and the cleansing foreshadowed a cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary we say that again the Old Testament day of atonement in the earthly sanctuary with its affliction of soul forgiveness of sins and the judgment and the cleansing foreshadowed a cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary a day of judgment as well that is as serious and significant as the day of atonement in the earthly tabernacle 
this fact that there is also a cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary and the day of judgment is intimated in Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews 9, reading from verse 21 says, Moreover, he, Moses, sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. So friend of mine, just as there was a cleansing of the earthly sanctuary from sin, there is a cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary. And Daniel chapter 8 and verse 14 states, Unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed unto two thousand three hundred days then shall the sanctuary be cleansed friend of mine we will discover what that cleansing of the sanctuary means and we will discover that God has set a date when the heavenly sanctuary will be cleansed friend of mine every phase of the sanctuary service was intended to turn the minds of the people to the coming Savior. To the coming Savior. Every day, the truths of Christ's death and ministration were taught. With every sacrifice, men and women looked forward by faith to the blood of Jesus that would atone for the sins of the world. In each day of atonement services, the minds of the people were carried forward to the closing events in the great controversy between Christ and Satan when Satan would be punished like the live goat sent into the wilderness for all the sins that he has tempted us to commit they will be heaped upon him and the Bible says that he will be like the wandering goat for 1,000 years all alone on this earth while the saints are in heaven he will be on earth for 1,000 years called the millennium all by himself with his evil angels ladies and gentlemen every type and symbol in the earthly sanctuary service pointed to the death pointed to the life death resurrection and the ministry of the coming redeemer yes friend of mine that day's services pointed to the blotting out of sin by jesus our high priest in the heavenly sanctuary that day's services pointed to the blotting out of sin by jesus our high priest in the heavenly sanctuary he jesus is there to intercede for his people and he stands ready to blot out the sins of all who will exercise faith in his shed blood in his death in their behalf the ancient day of atonement like the modern Israel's Yom Kippur foreshadowed the final atonement to be made for planet earth friend of mine the final atonement leads to the final judgment which will forever settle the sin question in the life of every individual and so a subsequent presentation will show how god set the date for the heavenly judgment the heavenly cleansing and the cleansing of this heavenly sanctuary god has set a date for the cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary even as there was a date a date for the cleansing of the earthly sanctuary on the day of atonement 
friend of mine, as we look forward to the coming of Jesus Christ, are you willing to place your life in Jesus' hands so he can work the miracle needed to make you righteous? Are you willing to put your hand, your life, in the hands of Jesus so he can perform that miracle to make you righteous in God's sight? I trust that your answer today is yes, Lord, make me one of your children. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Help us to understand that you're more willing to get rid of sin than we can ever imagine. And if we confess them and forsake them, you will grant us freedom within. Bless each viewer who put aside the time to hear your word today. In Jesus' name, amen.